Here we're going to do a vector loop analysis for this eight bar mechanism. So we'll draw the vector loop and then calculate position, and then get the velocity equations. So first we need to start by making a coordinate frame. The easiest way is for X to go along the ground. So even though the ground's not flat, that's okay. We'll just make X go along it. That'll make the math easy. And then we'll have Y going 90 degrees to that. And then we need to assign a vector to every link connecting the joints, just like connect the dots. So let's draw those. So now we've drawn all of these and notice that this arrow for the slider is parallel to the ground. So some of this is a little hard to see with the different colors, um, but the, those colors are gonna help when we start writing the loops out. Now we need to label all of these. So let's say we have R1, R2, R3, R4, R5, R6, R7, R8, R9. So R9 is basically going from the origin of the coordinate frame straight up to where the slider intersects. So we'll say the slider vector is R10. And then we need the red ground over here. So we'll have R11 being the vertical and R12 being the horizontal. So now that we've got all of these, we need to write out vector loop equations. So we have three loops and we'll have three equations. We also need to figure out knowns, unknowns, inputs, things like that. So let's do that first. Known, all of the Rs are known except for R10 because R10 is the slider, but the links of all of those other links do not change. So let's write those in. And then the known angles are basically all of the ones on the ground. So that would be theta one is only on the x-axis, theta 12 only on x, and then theta nine only on y, theta 11 only on y. So then the unknowns, these would be anything that changes in the inputs. We learned from the previous video that we get one input and our hint is this omega right here, meaning that's where the motor is mounted. So we know that because omega is the input, then that would have to be theta two. So the other unknowns are the other stuff that changes. So that would be all of the thetas that, and all of the r's that are not up above. So we'll have for the thetas and then the r. And actually we know theta 10 because we know that ground angle. So let's write theta 10 here so we don't think it's unknown. And then the last one is R10. We don't know that distance. And we figured out that theta two is our input. So if we have three loops, then that means we can get six equations. So that means we could solve for six nodes but it looks like there are seven unknowns. So we need a constraint equation to help us eliminate one of the unknowns. If we look at the picture, we can see that the triangle link has gamma on it and it doesn't change shape. So R6 and R5 are related to each other. So we look at how those angles would go Let's see, we have R5, R6, and the an angle between them is gamma. And if we're measuring from 
x-axis, that's theta five, and then theta six is this. So that constraint is theta five plus gamma equals theta six. So now that we have labeled all of our R vectors, figured out knowns, unknowns, input constraints, we need to write the vector loop equation and then these position scalar equations. So there are three loops. We have the green loop on the left, the blue loop on the bottom, and the red loop on the right. So let's start out writing those equations. Say we'll go around the blue loop clockwise. So the vector loop equations for the bottom one will have R2 plus R3 minus R4 minus R1 equals zero. Then for the red loop, we'll have, we, let's say we need to start, we can start at this ground right here where R12 connects and we'll go around clockwise also. So we'll be going with R4 plus R5 plus R7, and then we go down. So we're going reverse R11, reverse R12. And then finally, the green loop on the left, this one, let's go counterclockwise. So it starts out similarly to the blue where we have R2 plus R3. And then we go up the other side of the triangle plus R6 plus R8 plus R10. And now we're going against R9. So minus R9 equals zero. We've got these vector loop equations. So now from each one of these, we can get position scalars. So we'll get an X and a Y for each one of those. So for the blue loop, we'll have X equation and a Y equation. We'll write these in the most simplified form possible. So we see that R1 is only in the X and we'll take that into account when we're writing these equations. So now we've got these position equations. So we've got six position equations, two from each loop, and then we have one constraint equation. So that makes a total of seven equations and we can solve for the seven unknowns. So if we do that, let's look at a simulation of what that looks like. So you can see here, we've got the green loop on the left, the blue on the bottom, the red on the right, and then we didn't need a vector on top of that triangle because we were able to calculate every point on the linkage. Now here looking at the joint positions, we can see the cyclic nature of the thetas. And then this R10 is the other crazy looking one. 